the girls from the clubs to the fellas lips. I hear you shout my name while the blood runs through my veins. This is paradise, this is the reality. Tell me the things. What a perfect conversation. Let me be the main. There's no competition when it comes to me. Don't you make me feel like sending me these things? Just so I wanna have a thing above. But it's unique when it's fake. We fake to love. My soul is benevolent, patient love. How you arise, my senses. It's flawless. You finish my sentences. Finger to my lips. I can't explain how much I love this. Like Whatever. Don't matter. Is that right? I
<laughs> you can hear it just like of everything. Yeah. I was, just, I was rapping to every track. I had to apologize to a couple of people, yeah. Tell us how that came about. Oh man, that was like, uh, you know, there's like four or five uh, highlights in my DJ career for me. Okay. You know, and uh, that's definitely one of the one of the one of the biggest ones. Uh, when I was doing radio in Virginia Beach at uh, Hot 102.1, uh, rest in peace. Anyway, uh, about time the owner's album came out. Yeah. Star. They were on a radio promotion tour. And uh, I was one of the only few people on FM Dial playing their single. Yeah. They came through, blessed the show. You know, I did a half hour mix, all Gangstar joints. They couldn't see me. I was in like a separate room. <laughs> right? And so, I don't know. I think they thought like it was, they had met me like, yeah. when it came in. And I just don't think they put two and two together. Yeah. And then like when the mix came to the end, Premier was like, oh, Whose mix is this? Like yeah. that we're listening to. He's like, oh, it's J1. He's like over in the closet mixing. <laughs> and he's like, no, he's one of the illest DJs I've ever heard. And I was like, passed out, I think. Yeah. You know, whatever. And I, they came over and they signed like all my records. Like, uh, got to chill with them. Uh, you know, to spend a, a half hour Gangstar set for Premier and Guru. Rest in peace. Like, what? They're, they're that group for me. You know, like Hard to Earn was that album. That like one of those albums that changed my life. Yeah. Like, and I remember having like this long ass conversation with Guru about it and like probably like annoyed the shit out of him. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like six six months or so later, DJ uh, Mix Show Power Summit down in Puerto Rico, he pulled me out of the crowd, like saw me and was like, yo, let's go drink some beers at the bar. 
Like, you know, I was just like, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I mean, it's, it's like one of those like MJ moments type of situation. To this day, I'm still I think back about that, and I'm like, man, I'm still so blessed that I got to at least drink a beer with the dude. You know, obviously like, before, yeah, before he passed. Hey, I mean, God, him and Premier, both of them, just phenomenal. Can't say enough good things about them. I feel like if Premier says, yeah, you're fucking cool, or like you can spin, I feel like I could just, you could die the next day and be straight for the rest of your life. Yeah, and it was like even it was funny too because he even put me like to the test because like right after that they were like, yo, it would have to be on Biggie's birthday. Yeah, by the way, which was even crazy. Like, <laughs> Shut up, Mark. and um, he was like, yo. You gotta play a couple of Biggie joints, and it was kind of like, what are you gonna play? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's premiere. He, he's heard everything, you know. Like, he's done a couple yeah. of them joints. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that, that was the thing. Like, dropped a couple of Biggie joints for him. He, he felt it. Like, they did the drop for me. It was, it was cool, man. Yeah, that's dope. That's I mean, it, it was amazing. amazing. This is 105.1. It's in when you were like resident. Yeah, 102.1. 102.1. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man, it was cool. You know, I got me nothing good really to say about commercial radio, but fuck commercial radio. I got that out of it. You know? I, did, I, I gave up three years of my life for that moment, and it was worth it. You know. Shout out the end of the scene in Aviator, Wave of the Future. I had to play a lot of like. Uh, what was popular at that time? With Shanti? I played a lot of Shanti records okay. to get to meet Gangsta. Murder Inc. was really, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah I had to play Ja Rule songs. <laughs> yo, ja, I, yo I, I cannot front on the Murder Inc. days, especially these records with Jalen. Those were real popular at the time. It's just that you heard them over and over and over again. Pinnacle, I mean, like, DJs, I mean, you heard the set. I mean, you guys are the most critical two DJs I think I've ever met. I know a bunch of them. Amazing. Yes, these Amazing. guys are always big to eat. So, what do y'all, what do y'all think? I think, I, to sum it up, when I saw, because I watched the fight this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, right when that happened, yeah. he's just like, oh, Whoa. God, what, what, what's that? What, what's going on right was now? Was that Mitt Romney in the audience? They kept showing yeah. him, too. But he, he, his face was priceless. That man was like, whoa, you yeah. just got knocked That guy's just bad luck, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't care he goes. If he shows up in an event, if he shows up in one of my DJ gigs, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break something. The, just, just, just back up and go home. Yeah, just, Save yourself the trouble. It's like, yo, I'm taking the night off. Yep. Like, I'm out. Yeah, Mighty Mouse basically said that you're, you're a Marquez knockout punch right Jeez. now. That's, that, that was impressive. Was, it was devastating, Thank too. I got, I got much respect for, for Mouse and, and Roz, you know. To me, like two of the coolest cats I've met in DC, plus phenomenal DJs themselves. Yeah, like, there's, there's, there's no denying that. And anybody that thinks so is an idiot. We're gonna actually Thanks, get man. Ross to say something. So, yo, he's on the mic. Thoughts? I mean, you know, it's uh, Yeah. I mean, there's not much more you can say about it. Um, you know, it's definitely one of those situations where, like, that was one of my favorite DJs, period. That's true. Not just like, oh, you know, J1's nice in the D.C. area. It's like, yo, <laughs> you could put that up against, you know, anyone. anyone. Pretty much. Yep. And it, it, it holds up, man. Just, oh, sick. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, I mean, yo, there's really not much to say for real. I, I, I definitely think, appreciate I think that. Ron summed it up when, when he said, you know, when you, when you see somebody do their thing that makes you want to be better at what you do, there you go. Yeah. Like to see somebody do something that you do, to see like a yeah. peer, and you're like, man, I really gotta step my shit up. I mean, no, I definitely like, no lie, like, you know, I've been DJing practically the same amount of time as him. Yeah. But like, I'll see him, like, it was a few weeks ago, he's at Marvin on a Saturday, and I left, like, man, I felt like I never DJed in my life before. Yeah. You know, it's that ill. No, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and, you know, just on some real DJ yeah. shit, like, you know, there's definitely dudes that play good music, and there's definitely dudes that can scratch their ass off and do all the technical turntable uh, shit. And I just find it's rare that you find somebody that, that does both. Yeah, no, I mean, he was telling me, you know, I was just like, I saw the videos online, and I know he was telling me about it. I was like, yeah, he definitely knows how to scratch. But then you were like, yeah, but he actually opened up for fun at ODU, right? And it's yeah. like, what, 30,000 people? Uh, no, no, it wasn't that many. It was okay. like 8,000. 8, it, it seemed like 30,000. Should have gone with 30, the 30. Yeah. Should have gone with the 30 first. Uh, no, 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 1 million people, son. <laughs> eight, eight grand. So it's still not bad, but it's not like you can do like Slumber Brothers Records it was, it was and Big L Records. 
Yeah, you can't you can't just knock like the, the records you were playing for the first fifteen minutes in. You gotta play, you know, a gamut for to people to just kinda rock to while they're waiting for a band like fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. They wanna hear some nights type of stuff and you definitely have the repertoire because obviously I mean I've I've heard the the the, the stuff that you've done like production wise. Like I know you're I mean, based on the bio you're definitely moving to that. So the Almighty Rock yeah. stuff, the joint that I actually tweeted today. By the way, who did the video, the cartoon stuff for that? Was that moving around? Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Or, no, that was great. Um, the video stuff is not me. Like okay. as far as like making the videos, like, yeah, that it's just, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, you know, uh, come on, Mark. I, I do uh, the cartoon video design, design. <laughs> masonry yeah. work, yeah, computer design. You know, it's nothing. No, no, it was, it, but it's, it's, uh, it's definitely. I mean, I always kind of think that people who start scratching, people who start, obviously, you said you tagged, start hip hop first. Oh you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for me, it was always a combination of hip hop and punk rock at the same time. 